I'm Gillian Mason, I'm the Consumer and Community Involvement Lead at Hunter Medical Research Institute in Newcastle and I'm a consumer representative myself, I bring lived experience expertise to the work that I do and I'm also a clinician researcher. So I've been a physio for um, nearly 20 years now but firmly working on both sides of the bedside, bringing my lived experience and clinical expertise into the work that I do. We're going to have a conversation today about inclusion and diversity and equity, but before we jump into it, I want to flag with you that I have an intention of taking us to those words and past those words and concepts, because they can be pretty hopeful words that mean very little. They make us feel good, but we need to make sure that when we're using words, that we're not just using them without really thinking about what they mean. So I'd like to set an intention and, and ask you just to think about what diversity means for you in your patch. Like, how do you measure it? What's the diversity of your workforce? What do you mean when you say diversity? What do you mean in terms of uh, what your cohorts look like in trials? Who you're including in your machine learning data? So yesterday we spoke about inclusion, diversity and equity in clinical trials. And I really always pause to think when we use those words that often we're using them and we're not being very specific about what it is we mean. So when we talk about diversity, for example, we're often centering whiteness. We're talking about that the normal or the default persona that we design things around is often a white, well-educated, well person who doesn't have a disability, who speaks English, uh, who has enough money to come and take part in um, activities that would be in trials. And then anyone who falls outside that mould, we usually call that diversity. And so starting from that uh, framing and thinking about efforts to improve diversity, I don't think that's going to change that. So yesterday we explored things like the fact that racism and homophobia and ableism are the problems to address to improve diversity, equity and inclusion in clinical trials. I just want you to think about the default persona that we usually use when we design stuff, uh, clinical trials, when we think about our regulations and health technology assessment processes. And, you know, these things overlap, but it's quite likely that we're designing for a minority group. So white, well-educated, healthy people absolutely deserve to have excellent access to healthcare. These people aren't most of who we're talking about. So I, I just don't understand why we're still centering this existence and then calling everything else diversity. I'm passionate about this because firstly, we've got to think about these things in terms of justice. So everyone who lives in Australia deserves access to high quality healthcare. Uh, they should be able to access these things without a huge burden or expense to them. It's, it's a human right to access healthcare. And without um, thinking clearly about the fact that having an inclusive approach, looking for trial cohorts that are actually diverse, uh, without thinking about that as good science and instead thinking about that as kind of a nice thing to do or, or as kindness, it's not going to work. So we need diverse trial cohorts because we need treatments and medical services and screening tests that actually work for the population of people that we have not that work for a small group of people that then we try and adapt or kind of tweak a protocol or tweak an approach to let other people have access to that when it's not designed for them and when we can't be sure that the results or um, you know the interpretation of, of results are actually relevant to those different people who weren't included. I found this giant tree fallen over in the woods when I was on a bushwalk and I thought if a chronically ill person who's got a disability reads the inclusion criteria for a clinical trial in the woods and they fall outside of the inclusion criteria and no one's around to hear that they wanted to be in the trial, like did they even? So I think we probably are reaching heaps of people but then our trials and our work doesn't welcome them. They don't know how to ask for what they need or their needs just aren't catered to. I think that we're not really making strides to improve the diversity of trial cohorts for a couple of reasons. But the main one is that I think we've not approached diversity and inclusion as an actual mindset. So we're not using measurements, you know, usually we're not measuring or describing the populations in trials. So if we don't have data that shows that there aren't disabled people in our trials, then it's very hard to implement research findings. And there is a lot of research that looks at the barriers to access uh, to trials that looks at what improves when you Im include 
uh, lived experience expertise in the design of trials, in the selection of outcome measures. Like we're not designing research that feels and is really relevant to people who haven't been included before. But if we don't actually measure who's there, then it's, it's hard to know that things are improving. And it's hard to hold ourselves accountable to that, I guess, without measurements. So measuring, I think, is the biggest thing. And look, something that's also working well is uh, at Hunter Medical Research Institute, for example, we work with a couple of different research ethics committee. Hunter New England Research Ethics Committee uh, just recently has put a, a pause on uh, approving different applications uh, from researchers if they're going to not outline how they might include interpreters for people that need different language interpreters or if they're not showing that they will be inclusive of people with disabilities. So that's really helping. That's um, something also that then they're providing support for those things to happen too and not just slowing research down by not approving it. But we need system changes but we need to be accountable, measure things and then we've got something that we can know whether or not we're making progress.